AMD has recently released some new CPUs. We have the 3700X here that I'm going to review in this video. And we're going to compare it to a 9900K and we got gaming benchmarks and thermals and all kinds of stuff in this video. The 3700X is AMD's cheapest 8-core CPU now that's based on Zen 2 and it comes in at $350. It has a base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and according to AMD, this thing boosts to 4.4 gigahertz. So that's about 200 megahertz over previous gen. Uh, along with this, we have a giant cache, L3 cache that AMD is now calling gaming cache, as if that's a thing. And we also have increased memory frequencies along with these new Zen 2 CPUs. With a quick recap of what the 3700X is, we're going to be comparing it to the 9900K on a Z390 dark board. 9900K is overclocked to 5.1 gigahertz and it's on a 360mm all-in-one. And for the 3700X, I'm using the new X570 Azeroc Extreme 4 board. That is actually going to be using the stock cooler that comes with this thing. And there is a reason for that that I'll go over later, but those are just the things you should know before going into these benchmarks. So let's get the benchmark started. So for these gaming benchmarks, I chose to do 1080p low just to show any sort of differences between the CPUs as well as 1080p high and 1440p high. And these are all done on a GTX 1080. Basically, for a synthetic benchmarks, the 3700X matches the 9900K. Um, it's, it's a little bit faster in like Cinebench R15 with single thread and a little bit slower on uh, POV rate. But it more or less matches the 9900K. In gaming benchmarks, it's a little bit different. So, more or less, this thing does match a 9900K. It's, it's a good one or two frames slower consistently, maybe up to five frames slower consistently. And in some games, the 9900K does have a huge lead over this. There, there's just consistently lower, lower frame rates with this CPU here. And I did repeat these tests about five times total. So yeah, it's just consistently slower on this CPU for whatever reason that is. And it could just be that it's a new architecture, maybe updates will change performance. And I should add that uh, the CPU actually doesn't work with Destiny 2. So for whatever reason, this is on like Red all over Reddit. But basically, if you have one of these new Zen 2 CPUs and you try and play Destiny 2, it doesn't work. These Zen 2 CPUs just don't have a lot of headroom for overclocking. Um, so stock. You get one or two threads that sit around 4.375, 4.35 gigahertz, depending on load. And this is what I meant earlier by saying, according to AMD, the boost is 4.4 gigahertz. I only saw 4.4 on idle for a split second, and that was it. And so don't think you're going to be overclocking these CPUs all core to the boost frequencies, because it's just not going to happen. And for the most part, if you want to overclock these CPUs, you're going to have to sacrifice single threaded performance. The highest I could get on this CPU with the stock cooler was 4.375 and any higher just resulted in instability or, you know, just random reboots. And that was perfectly fine on the stock cooler. So temperature wise, stock not overclocked on the stock cooler, the Spire cooler that this comes with, you're sitting at about 75C under load. That's stock. And overclocked, you're looking at like 87C. That's where I landed out with the, the 3.75 overclock. The stock cooler is okay. 
thermal throttling starts, I, I think Ryzen Master says it starts at like 93C, low 90Cs, but you don't really gain anything by overclocking these CPUs. You'll gain performance in stuff like production workloads, so multi-core workloads, stuff like Premiere, rendering, stuff like that, because at stock, these CPUs don't actually boost all cores up. So they'll only boost one or two cores, usually just one core. So you'll gain stuff overclocking if you want to do multi-threaded stuff. But as far as gaming, I only I only benchmarked like three games while overclocked in the CPU just because there was literally no difference. There was like one to two FPS difference and that's well within margin of error, but it is consistent one to two FPS difference. But you're, you're looking at like 12 plus degrees Celsius on this cooler for one FPS, two FPS maybe. So yeah, it's not really worth overclocking. So it's $350. The 9900K is what, $500? That means you can just get a motherboard plus a CPU that matches the Intel CPU for the same amount of money. So this is kind of like the AMD version of a 9900K. Anybody that's looking for a 9900K should probably just get this now, honestly. And the only thing that I have to complain about is just PCIe 4.0. So with these new CPUs, they introduced the new standard for PCI Express, and that's PCI Express 4.0. And it's double the bandwidth, but the thing is, GPUs don't use that much bandwidth, at least none right now. So there's no point for gamers to get it. And it does mean faster storage, but that's only gonna affect a very small portion of people that buy these CPUs. Mostly just people that need to move giant files around or video editors. And it makes the motherboard so expensive. It makes the X570 motherboard so expensive. And so that's my only real complaint with these new CPUs is that the boards are too expensive. But you can use X470 boards with like a this CPU here, the uh, 3700X. So basically now you have a 9900K and you, you're gonna be perfectly fine. Now you will need like a BIOS update. So that means basically for a little bit more than a 9900K, you can now get the same performance with AMD plus a motherboard for the same price. Or a little bit more for a, a, a really nice board like a Crosshair 7 or whatever. So this is a really good proposition. This platform is really nice. And they also have like the 12 core and the 16 core coming out, which should be really interesting to see how it does against the Skylake X CPUs. Because if it's ma matching a 9900K, more or less, it, it's not quite the same exact performance as a 9900K, but in games, it's more or less the same. So if it's matching that, then the 16 core should be able to probably match the 18 core Skylake X chip, but uh, we'll have to wait until it comes out. That's just speculation. But it's gonna be really interesting to see these really high core count ones, how they stack up against these high core count Intel CPUs. I noticed everybody online is complaining about you can't overclock these things. And yet it's true, there's like no overclocking headroom. But the thing is, this is a die shrink, and like it, it's half the size as before. And usually that means slower speeds. So usually that would mean two to three hundred megahertz slower than the previous gen if you shrink the node. So from fourteen to seven nanometers. Uh, for example, Intel when they switched from Ivy Bridge to Haswell and Broadwell, they they had frequency drops. IPC increased, but the frequency dropped. So it's really cool that AMD can more or less keep the frequency. They've actually increased it. So before on Zen Plus, you're looking at 4.2 maybe max, 4.25. And now it's a solid 100 megahertz. At least this one overclocks about 100 megahertz all core above that. So anybody uh, that was thinking about getting a 9900K should probably just get this CPU, honestly, because like I said before, you get this CPU for 
you can get 150, 200, maybe a little bit more dollar motherboard, a nicer motherboard on X470, and it's gonna be about the same, a little bit more than a 9900K. And if you were buy a 9900K, yes, you have a tad bit more performance, but the boards, are you're gonna pay at least that amount of money for a good Z390 board. You're still spending more money. It doesn't make a lot of sense if you're just in it for gaming. And so yeah, that, I think that's what you, you should do if you're looking at one of these CPUs. You just get an X470 board. Because PCIe 4 is, as far as I'm concerned, it's pretty much pointless. At least for anything consumer related. It does mean that you could put more devices in your, your motherboard, that's cool. More bandwidth. So, that's cool that it exists, but I just don't like that it's increasing the prices of these motherboards. So, that's the video. And just to let you guys know, I have a few other videos coming up that you might want to be interested in. I have a 5700X right here that I'm about ready to start testing after I get this video pushed out. I got, I'm probably going to overclock this with some sort of ridiculous water cooling and maybe do some more stuff with the 5700X. We'll see. But if any of that sounds interesting, just stick around, subscribe, or whatever. Bookmark the, the channel, whatever you want. And if you have any comments or you like this video, you want to say something, just comment down below, put a like, and uh, until next time, bye.